Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to News Dose. So, do you remember how some people used to say that Xbox Game Pass wasn't necessarily a good thing for the game industry? Yeah, so about that. Xbox did reveal some statistics today for Game Pass, and just wow. What they revealed today was truly insane, and it shows that not only is Xbox Game Pass absolutely fantastic for the game industry, but also it actually is in fact a complement to traditional models. It is truly insane what they're doing over there, so we're going to talk about that one later on in the video. And then also a big PlayStation 5 update was just announced that fans have been asking for for quite a while now. This one would have actually been really useful for Elden Ring, but it's better late than never, so we will talk about that one a little later on in the video as well. With that said, if you do enjoy the video, make sure to hit that bell notification, subscribe, and like button to keep up with the gaming world as I am here every single week, Monday through Friday. Other than that though, let's go and jump right into things, starting off with a brand new game release that just kind of came out of nowhere, and this is for a new Ghostbusters game. Yeah, this one was a little unexpected, but Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed was announced for the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series, and it'll also be releasing on PC, though it will be exclusive to the Epic game store unfortunately if you are not a fan of the epic game store and if you do like ghostbusters you might have to wait this one out otherwise it will release in the final quarter of 2022 now in terms of gameplay this is an asymmetrical multiplayer game meaning four versus one gameplay this is something that we've seen in other games such as evolve and i actually do think that it makes a lot of sense for the ghostbusters universe i do think that this is the perfect pairing here but one thing that did stand out to me is that this game is being developed by ill Phonic. And this doesn't necessarily stand out to me for a good reason, but rather the games that they have made in the past have not exactly been all that well received. In fact, out of the four games that they've developed, being Predator Hunting Grounds, Dead Alliance, Friday the 13th, the game, and then Next Souls, their highest reviewed game so far sits at a 64 overall score on Metacritic. So they don't necessarily have the greatest resume in the world when it comes to quality. So for that reason, I'm going to have to kind of wait this one out and see how this one turns out before I get too <laughs> excited for this Ghostbusters game. But nonetheless, if you are a big fan of this franchise, you might want to keep an eye out for, again, the final quarter of 2022. Next up, unfortunately, and I know this is going to be a big surprise, but yes, we do have another delay to talk about today, this time for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Now, this was actually already rumored. We did talk about this one, I want to say about a month ago, but it has now been confirmed. Suicide Squad has now been delayed from 2022 all the way to spring of 2023. So I do know and understand that that's going to bring disappointment for those that were excited to play Suicide Squad later this year. This game actually is looking pretty good good from all the things that we have seen so far it is going to be a next generation exclusive game so visually it looks really good the gameplay and story looks rather chaotic to say the least and it just seems like it has a lot of potential but that right there is kind of the thing for me i know with any type of delay there's always going to be some disappointment but at the same time and i always say this i pretty much sound like a broken record by this point but I absolutely fundamentally believe this. Just give the developer the time to reach the game's full potential. While fans might be craving to play certain games, nobody wants a rush buggy mess, so just kind of give the developer time to make it a truly good game. With that said though, if you are a big DC fan, the good news is that just here recently, it was confirmed that Gotham Knights will be releasing this year on October 25th. So for you DC fans out there, you can at least look forward to that one. And then next year, you'll get Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League in spring of 2023. Moving on, the review embargo did lift today for Kirby and the Forgotten Land. This game does release later this week on March 25th, but reviews have went live today, and the good news here is that the first 3D outing for the Kirby franchise has been very well received with an 85 overall score on Metacritic as of this recording. That actually sounds pretty good, but just to kind of put things into perspective, this is actually one of the best rated Kirby games of all time, and it actually is the highest rated Kirby game since Kirby's Epic Yarn that released back in 2010 for the Nintendo Wii. Epic Yarn did receive an 86, but here with Forgotten Land receiving an 85, this definitely goes to show you that the first outing for a 3D adventure in a Kirby world has definitely been well received, and that is good news for those looking to pick this one up later this week on March 25th. Based off all the reviews that I have seen, it seems like this is a very charming game. The level design is top notch, as you would expect when it comes to really any type of Nintendo game. The new abilities are a lot of fun, especially sucking up some of those bigger objects, such as becoming a car. You can also become 
become a vending machine in Forgotten Land, and it all just seems like it's very fun and charming. Though one complaint that I have continuously heard is that once again, this is a very easy title. Now that's nothing really new when it comes to the Kirby games. These are great games for your kids to pick up as an example, but definitely don't go into this game seeking much in the way of a challenge. Now, a lot of times that would kind of be a deal breaker for me, but at the same time, I feel like that this is actually perfect timing for a release like this. And what I mean by that is that over the last month, a lot of people have been playing this game by the name of Elden Ring, which can be frustratingly difficult at times. So having a more relaxing experience such as Kirby in a Forgotten Land could be a nice transition from Elden Ring, maybe, possibly, but either way, it is sounding like it's an overall fun and good game that will be releasing just a couple of days on March 25th. All right, so let's come over to our next topic, and Xbox Game Pass is a service that launched back in 2017. And really, since its inception, there's been a lot of talk about sustainability, and also, is it really good for the game industry? There's a lot of discussion about that, that this is bad for the game industry just as a whole. It's bad for developers. How do they even make money on this service at all? And and while Xbox kind of stomped all of those accusations today, over at GDC today, they revealed some statistics on Xbox Game Pass that not only shows how a service like this benefits gamers, but also how it benefits the developers. GDC, of course, is for developers, so they're specifically talking to them here. And I mean, just check out some of these statistics here. It is absolutely ridiculously insane what Xbox is doing with Game Pass here. So first here, I'm going to go over the bullet points at what they revealed at this presentation here. And then after that, we'll go into a little bit more detail about some of the things that they talked about here and what it means for not just now, but also the future. But yeah, let's go and check this out. It says that members play 40% more titles after joining Xbox Game Pass. Members also play games across 30% more genres after joining. An average of 8.3 times player lift after a back catalog game joins Xbox Game Pass. For new games from large publishers, they see a 3.5 times player lift compared to similar games not on Game Pass. Similarly, we also see a 15 times player lift for new independent games. That's one of the big reasons we see a lot of independent games. Again, we'll talk about that here in a moment. Also, a 3.5 times lift for games launching on Game Pass compared to Steam. Then we're also seeing social conversation increase by three times for a game when it's announced for Game Pass. That's actually something I've talked about in the past. Game Pass members are also four times more likely to stream their games on Twitch, Game Pass members spend 50% more than similar users, and then post-sell monetization increases by 2.8 times after joining Game Pass. 50% of this comes from new players to the game. So there you have it, and the first thing that is absolutely clear from going over these different points is that Xbox Game Pass absolutely has a lot of benefits for developers. Not just gamers, but also developers. Well, yes, it's always been fairly obvious that Game Pass is good for subscribers, and we see that on a monthly basis. But when it comes to developers, that's where a lot of the questions comes in. Is it actually good for developers? And based off of what Xbox is revealing here, it absolutely is, and I think you can kind of categorize this into three different points. One would be monetization, two, discoverability, and then last but not least, also social marketing. Now, social marketing is one that I have talked about before, because one thing that I think a lot of people don't realize is that when a game gets announced for Game Pass, suddenly a lot more people are talking about said game. Any type of social interactivity when it comes to a game is basically free marketing, and Game Pass very much gives those games that type of exposure. And one thing about this, and I, this is something else that I feel like a lot of people don't completely understand, but it's not good for just Xbox gamers. If a game is multi-platform and it's getting all that attention on social media, it's also going to be good for PlayStation, Nintendo, PC, or whatever platform that game released on. That attention will translate to other consoles. You take something like Elden Ring as an example. When people talk about Elden Ring, you very rarely hear PC, Xbox, or PlayStation. People are just talking about Elden Ring, and that hype translates to every single 
legal platform. So you always have to remember that when it comes to Xbox and Game Pass games and the social exposure they're getting. That then also links to point number two, like I said, being discoverability. With those social interactions and the fact that you're able to just download a game at will, more games and genres are being discovered than ever before. They do very specifically say that members play games across 30% more genres after joining. That once again shows you the growth that we're seeing on Xbox thanks to Game Pass. You take a genre like JRPGs as an example. Those have never really been all that big on Xbox until Game Pass came along and now suddenly we're seeing more interest in these style of games. That is not a coincidence by any means. Now, the last part about this though is monetization. They do say that there's a 2.8 times increase in monetization after joining Game Pass, and 50% of this comes from new players to the game. That goes to show you that these developers can make a lot of money even after releasing their games into Game Pass. A game like Marvel's Avengers, as an example, that was a big AAA game that released into Xbox Game Pass last year. It is a live service style of game, and with so many more players jumping in because because of Game Pass, you can definitely see how that would be very beneficial in terms of monetization. And that also goes beyond games that are in the service. You take franchises as an example. Let's just take a look at something like Near Automata. This is a game that came to Xbox Game Pass, and because it was a very high quality game, a lot of people suddenly started liking it a lot. And then when Near Replicant released, I'm sure a lot of people that enjoyed it on Xbox Game Pass suddenly purchased Near Replicant as well. So yes, it can very much help out franchises. And then on top of that, and this I think is the big question that a lot of people do have, how about games that aren't releasing the Xbox Game Pass? How are those doing? Well, Xbox Phil Spencer actually talked about this one as well. He did stress the importance of different business models and says that retail sales are absolutely important to them, and they very much put a lot of resources into making sure retail flourishes as well. They do point out that Game Pass subscribers spends 50% more. So yes, from top to bottom, it very much does appear that Xbox Game Pass not only is, again, good for gamers, but it also is a great complement for developers as well. Next up, let's go and talk about PlayStation because not only did they announce a new update today, but they also announced a very much requested feature that'll be coming to the PlayStation 5 in the near future. We'll get into that here in just a moment. But yes, they did announce an update that is going live today, which includes various improvements. This includes things such as UI enhancements to game base and trophy cards. It includes accessibility features like mono audio for headphones and also the ability to create or join open and closed parties on PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4 consoles. None of this necessarily seems too major, but still improvements nonetheless. The big thing that we're going to talk about today, though, is actually that they revealed this often requested feature that would have been very welcome for Elden Ring, and that is variable refresh rate. Now, if you don't know what variable refresh rate is, or otherwise known as VRR, and why this is so important, well, it's described as being able to enable a game console or PC to send video frames as fast as it can to display, with the screen adapting its own refresh rate in real time to match that of the source. So basically, in other words, if you have VRR enabled, it tries to smooth out the frame rate for games that are uncapped, hence the mention of Elden Ring. Elden Ring is a very unstable game without VRR. Are, and I have used it without VRR, and in my opinion, it does not look good at all. But the thing is, is that VRR, this is actually on the Xbox Series X, which is the reason that I purchased it for the Xbox Series X. And I've been using VRR, and as long as the game sits in a specific frame rate zone, so if it's running from 45 to 60, then it actually looks really smooth. In fact, I didn't notice any type of stutters whatsoever on the Xbox Series X version. It ran flawless for me absolutely fantastic. Unfortunately, for the PlayStation 5, it did not have VRR, so that experience on the PlayStation 5, unless you're playing the PlayStation 4 Pro version, it was very unstable looking. Again, I turned off VRR on the Xbox Series X, and it is a massive, huge difference. So this is absolutely a game changer and a very much needed feature for the PlayStation 5. And the good news here is that they did announce that it is coming in the coming months. Now, there is an important note to take into consideration here, though. You do have to have a supported display. You cannot just simply enable VRR on your console and then it just suddenly work. You have to have a supported display. So you might want to check on the specs of your TV or monitor setup to see if it does support VRR. Now, I will say that modern LG 
OLED TVs, they do tend to have VRR. That's actually what I'm using myself, but yes, if you have bought an OLED LG TV in the last couple of years, there's a good chance that it might support VRR. Nonetheless, though, it is really great to see that VRR is finally heading over to the PlayStation 5. It's really just too bad, though, that this feature wasn't ready by the launch of Elden Ring because I think that that game is the premier example on why VRR is so good. Let's go and take a look at the poll of the day, though, and we are going to be talking about Kirby and the Forgotten Land once again. Of course, we talked about the reviews earlier, and it seems like it's a pretty good game, but I wanted to ask you all, will you be getting Kirby and the Forgotten Land later this week when it releases on March 25th? And as you can see here, 16% of you said yes, 58% of you said no, and then 19% of you said that you're still undecided. I am kind of interested to know, though, on those that were undecided on whether or not they've made that decision with the reviews making their way online today so if you were one of those that voted for undecided let me know in the comments below if those reviews did help you make that decision nonetheless though based off the comments i did see several people mention that one thing that turned them off was the fact that we are hearing once again that this game is supposed to be very easy as i said before when a game is overly easy this does tend to be a bit of a deal breaker for me it's not necessarily that i get upset when a game is really easy i just kind of understand that i'm not necessarily the target group. That's not a bad thing though, it's just I do enjoy more challenging games. At the same time though, I do like the timing of this release considering I have been playing Elden Ring all month long, so it might be a nice experience to have more of a relaxing adventure. Plus, I do have a kid that I think would probably really like Kirby and the Forgotten Land as well. Now, I know that I'm going to get this question because really every time I say that I have a kid, people are always like, well, how old are you? Yes, I'm actually 30 years old. I might not sound it. I have a younger, I guess, style of voice, but I am 30 years old. So, yeah, it's just going to keep that in mind. Nonetheless, though, Kirby and the Forgotten Land does sound like a good game. And even if it's not necessarily targeting gamers like myself, I do hope that it has a lot of success when it releases later this week. Anyways, though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.